creating an AI agent in NA10 was already super easy. You just click the button, chose the agent, gave it some instructions, and it was pretty much good to go. But with this new feature, it makes life even easier. This is going to show you how to create an agent in literally seconds without you having to fill in anything if you don't want to, and how to deploy this agent right now within the next couple of minutes. So let's jump over to this screen right here. And what I have here is a simple build, right? So we have one chat message is received, we have the AI agent, and if you've watched any of the previous videos, you know that we need to give an agent three things. We need to give it the chat model. So in this case, I'm using OpenAI. We need to give it some memory, if that makes sense for the specific use case, which in this case it does, as you'll see in a second. And you need to give it a few tools. So in this case, I'm going with Google Calendar, both create an event and update an event. So before, when you created an AI agent, so let's go to AI agent here, you had to give it, let's choose a the same tool, right? So go to Google Calendar. And over here, you had to say either provide a fixed expression or provide a fixed text, provide an expression. And there was this from AI variable, which was super handy because it would allow you to basically pass along one or two parameters. You pass along the actual name of the parameter, so start time. And you could also, let me just zoom in, you could also give this a description. So the, the time the event starts, right? And you would copy this, you would do the same thing for the end time. So you say end time, the time the events, and the event ends. However, with this new update in an A10, you don't even have to do this. And this is pretty insane. So now you get this, let the model define this parameter. Just hit that button. And this is now defined automatically by the model. Same thing with that. So defined automatically by the model. If you wanted to, you could add a description here, but that is totally optional and up to you if you want to get granular with it. So just with that, if I just choose my calendar here, I am able to immediately let this agent run free or run wild. So this is able to create a calendar event in my calendar. So if I go here and we just delete all the stuff so we can start from stretch and I just connect this to a when a chat message is received. So yeah, let's um, leave that. Let's choose the chat model. So I'm going to with my face was over here. So all I did is let's delete this. Choose the chat model. So open AI chat model. And I'm just going to choose GPT-40. So we'll leave that as is. Just close out of that. And let's just give it some memory here. So let's choose the Windows buffer memory. Let's leave this context window to five. And that should be pretty good to go. So like this, one thing I didn't add here, yes, I need to add, is this summary from Google. So here I'm going to choose defined by the model as well, because this will allow me to uh, provide the title for the event. That is the field called summary. The final thing I just need to do is add the date and time right now. So the, the date right now is, and let's pass along the now variable. So that will know, or will have context on what the day today is. So let's save this and let's say, create me an event for the, let me see, just pull up my calendar and find an empty time slot. Okay, let's do it for the 15th of March at 8 a.m. I don't, potentially doesn't know my time zone. So just to be sure. Time zone is Malta Central European time. That was, should be pretty good to go. Create me an event for the 15th of March, 8 a.m. Calling it um, YouTube video creation. So let's hit enter. This hits the OpenAI model, created the event, updated the buffer. And if I go to my calendar right here, so it's March 15th, I get the YouTube video creation. 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Did I say? I don't know if I said the time. Yeah, at 8 a.m. calling it YouTube video creation. I didn't specify the length, so it decided it should be one hour, 30 minutes. And that's pretty much it. So there's not even the need to define the 
to go here, the start and the end time. So this is defined automatically by the model. So pretty, pretty insane type of stuff. But let's take this a step further. If we X out of this and let's say we now, I don't know, let's connect Airtable and put that into the mix. So let me just open up an empty base here that I use for testing. So here I have a test base. I'm just going to add a blank table to it, or let's just, hmm, this should be interesting. So if we go to table three, yeah, let's call this calendar. Let's, let's have a and name. Let's have a start date, which is a date field. Let's see if this would work. Let's have an end date. Again, type date. And let's add description. So let's say that we want to have the same thing added right here in our table. So here, I'm going to add our table, two tools to our table, the ability to So this gets specific information from a table. Ideally, I want to get the schema, but I don't think I can do that. So let's go with create only. I'm going to choose my table base. So this is called test. The list, so let's go with calendar events. For event name, I'm going to choose let AI define, let AI define, define. And for the description, um, yeah, that shouldn't be that. It should be like a single line text. Okay, so let's refresh this. And now, for some reason, okay, uh, let's see if we get the, yep, there's the magic button. I think that's pretty much it. So map this, okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So if I go here and say, do the same thing, but add the, Info to our table. Use the and I mean use the tool. Potentially it could find that information. So here it, I run into some type of error. And yeah, we didn't get that. So let's see what happened here. So here it said your request is invalid or could not be processed by the service. Now the question is why? So if I go back here, let's see. Our table. Request is invalid. Star date cannot accept the provided value. Okay, so probably it's something related to the um to the thing to the format of the date. What I know is that here there is a option to add type cost. So let's define let, let's switch that on and see if that could Solve it. So I'm just going to um, retry this. So retry the last request. And let's have a look at what happens here. Okay, we got that green tick mark here. Okay, wow, that's insane. Start to 15, to 15, creating a YouTube video, YouTube video creation. That's pretty, pretty insane when you think about it. So this makes building. AI agent really that powerful because I literally just said where I want to insert my information. So I just sold my date, my base, I chose my table and that's pretty much it. Everything else was defined by the AI based on the input on the one liner that I gave it here. And I didn't even have to do that because I just said, retry the last request or whatever, um, do the same thing, but at the info to our table. Pretty insane. Um, Let's, let me see, I had something else here. Yes, let's do the same thing in Slack. So if I go here, I have to add my Slack tool. I'm not sure if I'm signed into Slack on, yeah, I am. So yeah, let's go with send. Let's send a message to a channel. Let's choose a, okay, let's see if this says AI defined and we'll define it in the prompt. So simple text message, message text can be defined by the model. 
and let's just say do um do the same thing in my Slack channel called this whole general. Let's see what happens right here. Okay, I think it recreated it in our table and then posted to Slack. So let's see if that actually worked in Slack. So if I go to my Slack. Yep. And I have a look here. I get created an event for YouTube creation March 15th from 8 a.m. to 9 30 to Malta time. Obviously, I get the attribution here, which I can easily delete, but again, pretty insane stuff. So if I go to Slack here, adoption, um, I guess include link to workflow turned off, and this will allow me to not have this attribution created. So pretty insane stuff when it comes to building AI agents, and it was already very powerful, but with this, I mean, yeah. Um, I just found out about this and just wanted to test it out. And it really doesn't disappoint when you think about how easy it is to connect stuff together right here. The ability to connect stuff via HTTP as well. So there's a lot you can do with this new feature as well. Anyway, that's it from my end. I hope you enjoyed the video and you got value out of it. If you did, don't, don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss future ones. And if you want to learn more about AI and automation, check out the link in the description where you'll be able to get free access at the moment to my community area where you're able to download the blueprint for this video as well as a bunch of other stuff that is coming out very soon so i'm recording my n810 beginners course as well so you'll be able to get up to speed with how to use n810 and the various functions that it offers and yeah go check it out if you're into it and i'll catch you in the next video cheers